Yesterday on Halloween, we lost a legend, Sean Connery, the original James Bond. He lived a good long life. He was 90. So I'm about to bring to you, in memoriam to him, the first two of my favorite movies of his. And this one I'm going to start off with will be Entrapment. Big Days Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Doyle, better known to you as the Big D. And this time around, I bring to you a review of the 1999 action-packed caper film, Entrapment, released by Fox and Regency in 1999. Directed by John Meal, ran by Raul Bay, starring the late, great Sean Connery, along with... Catherine Zia Jones with Will Patton, Ving Rames, and Mari Shaken. Now, the film focuses on the relationship between an investigator and a notorious crook as they attempt a heist at the turn of the new millennium. Now, I haven't seen this film in years. I have it in my old video collection, but anyway, like I said, it's been years since I've seen this movie. But, I am going to say, it's got some mixed response and what have you. But anyway, let's get into our story. We start out with our main two characters, Virginia Baker, or Jen, as she's called for short. She's an investigative re investigator for Waverly Insurance, and Robert Mack, MacDougall, he as he's also called to Mac, is a professional thief who specializes in international art. A priceless Rembrandt painting is stolen from an office building in New York one night, and Jen is sent undercover to investigate Mac as the chief suspect. Yes. Let me see. Yes. Well. And soon she's going to plan to entrap him with a proposition, claiming that she's a professional thief herself. Yeah, um, that's when, um, comes to her hotel room, she doesn't have any, everything, her suitcases are missing. Yeah, Mac appears out of the shelves when she wakes up, and it's like, rule number one, never carry a gun. Yes. <laughs> and when she wakes up, it's like, I'm going to ask you some questions, and if I don't like your answers, you're going out the window. Why are you following me? And she's like, I have a proposition for you. He's like, how do I know that you're not a cop? It's like, I don't know. You're just going to have to believe me. He's like, rule number two, never trust a naked woman. <laughs> believe me, that's one of my favorite moments from this. Anyway... Promises that she will help him steal a priceless Chinese mask from the well guarded Bedford Palace. Before agreeing, Mac tells us, uh, Yeah, never carry a gun. You carry a gun, you may be tempted to use it. I forgot that part. My, my bad. So, uh, apparently, uh, things just really get. Surprised and what have you, and so the next day, um, Jim meets with Mac, and they go to like this here antique shop, and she's going in and uses kind of a credit card thing to get this here Ching vase and what have you, yeah, uh, or a vase as um, the British call, because British people, well, or Scottish people, because I'm um, Sean Connery Scottish, <laughs> yeah, they call. Yeah, because that had something in it, and boy, she really gave it to that guy with with a vase, and God was was in it, and what Mac was looking for. Boy, I couldn't believe it. She tell him that the man, the, the antique salon, came out with, and I was like, "What was I supposed to do?" And he's like, "You are supposed to get the damn vase." <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, but she had what was it? It was microfilm plans for Bedford Palace. So 
and now Mac was about to get ready to to take off, and he ex explains what happened. There was a mystery that at this place called Kryptonite, and so like stro stole like a like microchips, and one of them was in um, Jin's suitcase. And as soon as he starts to leave, he gives them photos. She can't even believe what she's seen. And she's like, "Hey, this is entrapment." What? I said, I, dis I said this is called entrapment. And it's, and it's like, no, actually it's called blackmail. Entrapment is what cops do to thieves. You coming? <laughs> and off they go. So, they travel to Scotland and plan the very complicated theft at Max Hideout, an isolated castle. Aaron Thibodeau, played by Vin Grames, Apparently, the only ally that Mac trusts arrives with supplies for the heist. Apparently, they're trying to figure out how to use all these things, and but he didn't like the, um, the thermal camera guy. He says, I specifically said no liquid plasma screen. Yes, that was all he could get. <laughs> so, they go to work and... Well, they're doing all sorts of stuff, trying to use these um, explosives and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And apparently, now, they're practicing with red thread or yarn to practice as laser wires in order to get to the mask. Yeah, and he explains, she's trying, Jenny, it's like, move it. You got three minutes till the guard gets here. And she keeps messing up and everything. She's like, I need a break. It's like, you'll get a break when you get it right. Number one. <laughs> and then, oh boy, it's so cool. Anyway, while Mac is busy making final preparations, Jen contacts her boss, Hector Cruz, from a payphone and informs him of Mac's whereabouts. Little does she know that the whole island is bugged allowing Mac to eavesdrop on their conversation. Mac also makes sure to keep Jin's romantic advances at bay, unsure if she is a true partner in crime or an ambitious career woman on a mission. So... Let's see... They soon get into action and... Everything. So they go to Bedford Palace and eventually get into action. And Jin really does her moves to get past the security lasers. And gets the mask and he's a little chewing gum to neutralize the um, pressure switch. Or should, or should I say in... Max words, the damn pressure switch. <laughs> yeah. So after they have stolen the mask, Max, Mac accuses Jin of planning to sell the mask to a buyer in Kuala Lumpur and then turn him in. But she convinces him that her insurance agency job is the real cover and that she has planned an even bigger heist in Kuala Lumpur. A billion dollars from the International Clearance Bank which refers to the Bank of International Settlements in Malaysia, in the North Tower of the Patronus Towers. During their setup, Cruz and his team, with the guidance of the stealthy uh, Aaron, track down Jin and confirm that she is still on a mission with Mac. So now I'm going to get to the ending of this. You got five seconds to stop this video? Go to the description box below. And fast forward to the time below to avoid ending spoilers if you've not seen the movie. And if you have, keep going with this after the countdown. Here we go. Excuse me. Okay, you've been warned. Despite the presence of crews and other security watching the building, the death takes place in the final seconds of the new 2000 millennium countdown. Jim pulls the plug on her laptop prematurely and sets off alarms. They narrowly escape the computer vault and are forced across the lights hung from the bottom of the bridge linking the two towers. Following a death 
to find escape when the cable breaks, Jin and Mac make their way to a ventilation shaft, where Mac explains plan B, using me parachutes. They were going to escape down the shaft. Jin has lost her parachute early in the escape, so Mac gives her his, and he tells her to meet him the next morning at the Pudu train station. He explains it that just like in after he's given her the rules and what have you. Tells him, I'm never too late. If I'm late, it's because I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Jen arrives at the station waiting for Mac, and he shows up late with Aaron, who reveals himself with fellow FBI agents. He explains that Cruz is here, and that the FBI has been looking for her for some time. Two years earlier, when Aaron caught what caught him, arrested him, Mac made a deal to help the FBI arrest Jin, as she was the primary target all along. However, the aging thief has another plan to help her escape. Mac slips Jin a gun and quietly explains that he returned only seven of the eight billion dollars they had stolen electronically in the heist. Jin then pretends to hold Mac hostage at gunpoint, threatening to shoot if the agents follow her. She boards a train and the FBI heads to the next station. Jin jumps trains mid-station and arrives back at Pudu. She tells Meg that she needs him for another job, and they both board a train. End of story, my friends. Okay, so... Okay, so I was scared myself. So, what are my thoughts on Entrapment? I'm going to say, when I first saw this movie, I really loved it. It was a total fun-filled caper of a flick. I mean, I love the performances we got from Sean Connery and Catherine Zia-Jones. Believe me, I I kind of bit, had a bit of a crush on Catherine Zia, after see, especially after seeing her in The Mask of Zorro. But anyway, I just gotta say, she was a hot one. <laughs> but anyway, the rest of the cast is not too bad. The story's pretty good in some ways. But anyway, the film went on to become a big success despite mixed reviews. The film went on to make $212 million worldwide. Now, um, music done by Christopher Young is pretty good. And John Emile's directing is pretty good. So... It just could, well, it had a few misses and what have you, but it's hard to explain the misses, though. But anyway, nevertheless, I loved Entrapment, so the question is, would I recommend it? Hell yeah. This is one flick you should check out. I mean, since we lost Sean Connery, this is one flick I would recommend you check out. I'm sure you've been checking out all our movies he's done, like the James Bond movies. Or any other movies. Now, I'll actually be doing another one next weekend on Saturday. And it'll be his last movie he ever did, 2003's The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and give you the heads up on what that will be, okay? Yeah. Which I will be revisiting that since that's on Prime. So, anyway, Entrapment, I think you're going to like it if, you, if you've never seen it. So, that's all I'm going to tell you. It's just fun. It's action-packed. I really liked how they um get through the security and what have you. That was so incredible. Very good. So anyway, what are your thoughts on Entrapment? Please tell me in the comments section below. If you liked this video, click the like button below and subscribe to my channel as well and be a part of the Big D Nation. And stay tuned because I'll be doing the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen this Saturday. Well, this Saturday night, anyway. But anyway, next time I'll be bringing to you a review of someone who actually comes to England, Paddington. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and if you like this, you might want to check out some of these other videos, if you'd like. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of... Uh, a real good movie, um, well, a real good movie franchise, which has had many hits or misses. You can check out um, my X-Men film reviews, if you like, since Fox released that a year after this. Or, if you want something even more good, check out 
my review of Daredevil, another superhero movie. Don't mind me putting superheroes up, because this may not be a superhero flick. But I'm putting some more Fox stuff up there. The upper right-hand corner is Daredevil, which is also now playing on Prime. Or... If you'd like to try and catch what you have you didn't hear go well earlier, go to the bottom left hand corner for my recent pickups video of October stuff and what's coming up on my channel this month in November. In the bottom right hand corner of the button, you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya and may Sean Connery rest in peace. Bye now.